I can see because we let Twega. Yo, that guy kills me. I should that kills me. Anyway, Jubilam Buma Seva. I hope you guys are good and welcome back to another review. This week I am in the Amarok Aventura V6, right? And uh, if you're new to the channel, where have you been? Please do subscribe, watch the ads, you know, join the family. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. And I hope you guys enjoy this review. Let's get into it. So now, let's clear the elephant in the room, obviously. I've been getting very funny comments since I posted the Amarok. Some people are saying, I'm a ranger and all that nonsense. And I'm like, guys, no, you know, we do all know about the partnership or collaboration that Ford uh, did with Volkswagen to produce the new Amarok, you know, so... A lot of the elements of it are from Ford. Brass uh, Balibaco Silverton, by the way. <laughs> and I was scared that when I get into this car, I would feel like I'm in a Ford more than I am in a Volkswagen. But actually, to be quite honest, this is still very much a Volkswagen product. Um, I mean, look at the exterior. Just start outside. You have the IQ matrix headlamps which look absolutely stunning and you guys can see that they don't have the same um c type of headlamps that the that the ranger has um so it's very distinct very amarok you know the v6 the v6 badge is slotted over there you have an Am amarok decal that is literally just by the number plate you have aventura you have a compass at the back you know it's very amarok it's very very volkswagen and i think this mid blue color is absolutely stunning um, so on the exterior, I think it's probably one of the most beautiful buckies on the market. I don't know what you guys think. Do you guys think that this is prettier than the Ranger? I personally think so. I think the Ranger looks a bit more rugged. The Ranger looks a bit more hardcore. This has a bit of a softened up look. And although it does have road presence, it's more, it's, it's, it's easier on the eye than the Ranger. It doesn't have that very robust, very um, aggressive styling. It's aggressive in its own right, but it's still softened up. And that's why I think that the, for me, the Amarok is actually a very beautiful, beautiful vehicle. You know, the ground clearance on this thing is stunning. You have this view of, Everything as you're driving, what I can see, you know, I can see my future very bright. I can just see, you know, um, so I really do enjoy also the ride height of this vehicle and um, everything about it, the stance, the look, everything about this uh, Aventura is absolutely, absolutely stunning. Now we move on to the interior of the Amarok V6. Look, the interior for me is beautiful. You have this brown upholstery on the dash, this brown leather stitching finishing on the dash, which gives it a nice contrast from the black that's going on around. Um, and the finishes in here are actually quite good. You know, you have the large 12.3 inch infotainment system screen that also we found in the Ranger. Um, so I do like the way it looks. There's ample storage space, ample, you know, for your cup, your cup holder space and all the water bottles if you need them on the side and i actually do like this gear lever quite a lot you know it's a small rounded gear lever for me it's like a stress ball and what's cool about it is that when you stop the car and you're not in park it just goes to park on its own like it just it's so cool like ah that was such a cool thing like on the inside you have a harman kardon sound system find it to be really cool it's banging it's great you know and i think that the interior is very very beautifully done you know you have the brown stitching also on the seats giving it a very distinct a very rustic kind of look you know so from the outside it's a very new kind of vehicle looks very bold and then when you get inside it's a bit calming very rustic very nice you know with a lot of tech and a lot of features in here um so i really do think that in the interior it's absolutely stunning the only thing that's actually making me upset is the steering wheel I'm actually very disappointed in the steering wheel. I feel like if I'm paying north of a million rand, I can't be facing a steering wheel that I see in a T-Cross or in a Polo. I really wish VW could have made a distinct kind of steering wheel, you know, gave this a bit of a different one. Oh, there's a Ranger. Okay, they could have given it a bit of a different steering wheel, if you get what I mean. Like something just a different thing. Like I'm to like, me and then go banali did they give ah i'm a be little chale it's not that has not make sure that's the only thing i don't like the steering wheel the way it looks but other than that i think the interior is absolutely beautifully done you have electric seats you have heated seats in the in here you have a plethora of features that i think that are very extensive uh, for a bucky of its caliber I do also like the fact that there is a roller shutter at the rear, obviously giving it a bit of a distinct look. I think you guys remember in the Hilux review, the roller shutter in the Hilux is operated by a button on 
the the load bay with this one it's on the key which i think is a bit more functional than having to walk all the way back you can just operate it from anywhere anyhow and it's quite quick and seamless in terms of the way it opens and closes uh, and you have an, enough space for all the things that you need to put in the load bay so i think it's actually quite cool and now we move on to what's powering this aventura amarok v6 so this vehicle is powered by a 3 liter turbo diesel engine so it's a 3 liter TDI V6 that produces 184 kilowatts and 600 newton meters of torque and I think it's probably a very very punchy engine I mean you put your foot down you know there's a bit of a delay when it comes to when you want to go but there we go you know it just goes man and what I like about it doesn't have that very annoying aggressive diesel grunt that gah, 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 gah. it actually sounds cool it's very quiet noise insulation is absolutely great can't hear much on the outside there is a little bit of road noise I think it's because of the tires that it's sitting on and um, the tires are very big um, so <clears throat> there's a bit of road noise that is a bit irking me but I think it's absolutely yo I think the power retention in this thing is great. I mean, when you're traveling at a high speed, it still maintains its power. And looking at the size of the vehicle, how big of a car it is, I think it's beautifully crafted. And this engine is such a peach, um, for, especially for, for the car of its caliber. And when it comes to the fuel consumption of the vehicle, I mean, I always say when you're buying a bike, diesel or petrol is the least of your worries because you cannot expect to get like six liters per 100 Ks, right? Um, so in here, I'm doing 10 liters, a dead 10.0 liters per 100 Ks. And I've currently just hit 800 kilometers on this tank. So I find it to be quite frugal. Guys, considering the fact that this is a three liter V6, it's a big tank. Um, I only poured about 400 rands earlier um, and only because when they pick up the test cars you know you can't give it to them when it's empty 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 it's just not courteous because they give it to us on a full tank so you must take it back with a little bit of something so that they can get uh, between wherever they need to pick up or deliver so I poured a bit and yeah but I'm, I mean for me it's lasted me the whole week I've, I've, I've been driving so much I mean I almost had like 800 cases a lot and to get that on one tank I think that's absolutely commendable so I really do think in terms of fuel consumption, when it comes to buckies, it's neither here nor there. Um, they all consume quite a lot. Um, and I think for a V6, I'm actually impressed with it. So let's get to the verdict. What does River think of the Amarok V6 Aventura? Don't own what what. To be honest, guys, I initially thought that I'd be jumping into something that's very forward. I mean, I'm seeing another Ranger here. Like, hi, sibling. <laughs> Um, I really did think that I'd be getting into a Ford Ranger in a different suit. I really thought that. I was not expecting this. But this is very true to Volkswagen. It has its own identity. It has its own DNA. They've managed to retain that Volkswagen heritage in this vehicle very well. And I, I say this because also when you're in a Volkswagen, the infotainment system has a mind of its own. Kore and that's how I experience Volkswagen like that all the time. It takes a bit of a while to respond, the infotainment system. Sometimes the Bluetooth disconnects or reconnects. So I'm just like, yeah, no, it's a VW. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But that's the take sometimes in here. Doesn't really, it, it it's not make sure. It's not like a fun you use it, man. It's, it's, it's sometimes a bit. Uh. Um, so I do think that. Um, Volkswagen did a really good job in making sure that they retain their heritage and make sure that this car is still much of an Amarok. Might have the heart of a Ranger, but it's still very much an Amarok. And I really do think that this Aventura is actually the best lifestyle bikey you can get right now. I'm not even lying to you guys. You know, there's Navara, yes, there is Ranger, yes. All those buckies are great. But in terms of a lifestyle aspect, the Aventura is actually the top lifestyle bucky there's nothing for it i don't think the wild track would meet up to that lifestyle element the wild track still has a very rugged a very um workhorse kind of aesthetic whereas this one is basically the more relaxed kind of one this is not the bucky that you this the aventura v6 this is not the bucky that you take off the beaten path you put it to its paces no this is for everyday living this i would daily in a heartbeat this car is really pretty it's it's stunning it's big it's the it's what should what a lifestyle bucky should be this is they took the term or they took the mandate they had a mandate yeah lifestyle bucky and i think amarok nailed it perfectly especially with this aventura v6 i drove the panamericana which slots below this one um on the n2 from pe to neisner and that thing just moves man like it's so 
it's properly built it's it's really really a commendable bikey i mean i told you fuel consumption is decent neither here nor they're very that's a very subjective kind of matter you know the steering wheel yes kind of irks me but i think in terms of a lifestyle element they got it right you know so i would confidently say and I, you know me guys i never tell you guys to buy cars i always say it's up to you but i think if you're in the bikey space and you're looking at something for lifestyle aventura v6 is your guy but if you want something that you know has a lifestyle element but can also go off-road and go off the beaten track and can take a beating, then I would say take a Ranger but take the bi-turbo. Um, now Wild Track for me, the only reason I'd get the Wild Track is because of that orange color. That's, that's it. But I think if I'm looking for a lifestyle bikey, Aventura V6 is my number one bet. So I think that's where you guys need to go in terms of the lifestyle element. So when we come to the pricing, uh, of this car this vehicle is priced at 1.1 million right and yeah that is a lot of money that really is a lot of money for a bikey um but i do think it's somewhat worth it i think you're getting something that's so different from the rest you know you're getting something that is so comfortable on a daily you're getting something that's sub subjectively okay on fuel you're getting something that's pretty you're getting something that you would enjoy being in on a daily this is the perfect car for me because i drive every day long distance long commutes and i think that this would work for me it, like perfectly seamlessly it's not even cumbersome to drive like it's 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 manageable to drive steering is nimble and prompt you know you put your foot down you point it to the direction it does what you need to do it's a very good bucky you know and at that price point obviously you guys will probably say oh that's expensive that's expensive but you're buying into a lifestyle element so i really do think that is great so overall I think the Aventura makes for the perfect lifestyle bikey. It's a bikey that I would recommend for you, especially if you're looking for something that's a bit different and something that you can enjoy on a daily commute to work and back, you know, doing some light, light work, you know, uh, obviously normal off-roading, like very normal gravel, like maybe Hoya High, like or Kai 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 Kai, you know, uh, it's probably, it's going to work for that. Um, so I really do think that as a, it's a, it's a fantastic bikey and look i'm highly impressed with it and probably this could be one of the best bikies i've driven in my career so i will definitely give this car a 9 out of 10. it's only the steering wheel and a bit of a glitchy infotainment system that is making me um upset um but the tech is still volkswagen you know as much as they've borrowed a lot of parts from ford it's still very much a Volkswagen. And I think that this is a car people should not overlook. Um, obviously, you can look lower on the range. Hey, Maseve. Like, people just hoy themselves in the road. Hey, it will let the rain, Robo. Eh, the money. Anyway, <laughs> I think that this is actually an, an, an absolutely amazing buggy. So, I really do think you guys should check it out. Um, you guys know what to do. I mean, it's all up to you. But let me know in the comments what would you get? Would you get this? Would you get a Wild Track? Would you get a V Cross? Would you get a Legend RS? What are you buying? You know, with 1.1 million rand. I'd love to hear from you guys. And that is it from me, an award-winning journalist at that matter. <laughs> hey guys, Zia Kala Motuine Award. Um, so NAMSA conferred the top emerging auto journalist award to me um, a few nights back and I couldn't be more proud. I think it's not just my work, it's also you guys supporting, subscribing, engaging with me and I do not take any of this for granted guys so thank you so much. Like Maseve just became a thing like everyone's like congratulations Maseve. I'm like hey guys Maseve is a thing so yeah. My server is a thing. But like honestly, thank you guys so much. And shout out to 10,000 subscribers. We did it. We did it. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. But yeah, guys. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Road to 20,000. Road to 30,000. Road to 500,000. Road to 1 million. Road to 10 million. Road to 6 million. Look. <sighs> From Pretoria to the world. From Pretoria to the world. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you would get for 1.6 million and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!